dinner tonight. Well, I'd love to, uh, but uh, I already have a date. Well, anything I can do to make you change your mind? Uh, well, it's another night, really, I'd, uh... Last chance to change your mind. Oh. Now a nice gentle turn is going to make a nice gentle turn. One of these days, I'm going to break your neck. Please, Bill, not in front of the you lady. You can't resist, can you? You know those stunts always scare all the customers away. Easy. Well, aren't you going to introduce me, at least? Marvely, this is my mechanic, Bill Camelli. Hi, Marvely. <laughs> Our chariot awaits. That? That is a valuable antique. That is a semi-classic. Boy, flying really builds up your appetite, doesn't it? Sure it does. Well, where are we going to eat? Uh, Bill, you better check the engine before I go up again. It sounds terrible. Shall we go? 
Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me check under the hood first. Kill the engine. It's a plug lead. It's broken again. I'm not gonna kill it. It won't start again. Well, I'm not gonna touch it with the engine running. If I do, I'll get a jolt that'll knock me from here to next Tuesday. I'll do it. do that without getting a shock. No sense and no feeling. Have a good time now. Ciao, baby. Ciao, baby. Where's he going? Why? What's it to you? I'll tell you why. Because that's my daughter in the car with him. <laughs> She's got your eyes. Look, Maverick. When I ask you a question, I want an answer. Two seconds. I'll get it out. Chris, I never had dinner. I couldn't get you out of the dance floor. Sir, I was just getting the uh, door. And that's all you're gonna get.
Can I help you? Yeah, I'd like to see General Darrow. General Darrow. He's my father. Your father is General Darrow. You got it. I can tell you this much, Ed. This little gadget has enough electronic circuitry in it to give a man the capability of going into suspended animation for any given period of time. You mean he could live forever? Well, let's just put it this way, as long as it's necessary. And uh, whoever broke in here last night, you think that's what they were after? Well, it makes sense. How the hell did they find out about it? Forget about its military value. If you had all the money in the world, how much would you pay for a device that would prolong your life? General Darrow's office. Uh, sir, there's a man at the front gate with no identification, claiming to be your son. My son? General Darrow, describe him to me. Yeah, he looks like he's about six feet tall, brown hair, uncut. He's um, wearing a dirty suede jacket and um, driving a really beat up convertible. Yes, that's my son. Um, escort him on. Something wrong, sir? Uh, no, something personal. Ed, I want you to start a full investigation into our security system. We're about to begin suspended animation tests with this on a human being. Another foul up in our security system can endanger the whole project. You're meeting with the Secretary of Defense on Thursday. Does it have anything to do with this? That's beyond your need to know clearance, Ed. I'm sorry, sir. I'll uh, get on that security problem right away. Come in. Sure, we don't have the same tailor. I see you've inherited your mother's sense of humor. I wouldn't know. I never knew her. I wish you had. So do I. Don't! I need your undivided attention. I have important calls coming in. Just once. Just one time. Your undivided attention. I didn't come here to argue. I came here to tell you that after all these years, you and I are going to have to play father and son again. Is that a command? No. You're the general. Look, I'm not asking you to like me. I'm not asking you to approve of me. I'm asking you to help me. Hold all calls. Well, what is it? I know it's not money. You wouldn't ask me for that. Are you in trouble? <laughs> yes. Not the kind you think. Look at this. And this? this? Now, what's happening to me? Easy. Easy now. Steady. Steady. Look, something happened to me last night. I was hit by lightning. What? Yes. Ever since I... It's like I'm... I'm charged. I'm carrying a full electrical charge. I... I should be dead. Obviously, I'm not. It's crazy. You've shown this to anybody else? No! I came straight to you. I need your help. Come with me. Hey, 
Ed, get me a chopper right away. Helipad on the double. Then call Dr. Joanne Miller, Aeromedical Research Division. Tell her to cancel whatever she's doing and stay close to her phone. I'll talk to her from the chopper. Yes, sir. Yeah, Spencer, uh, I have to make a call for the general. Then I'm going off the base to a contractor's meeting, so take messages for me. When I return, I want a detailed report on base security. Now get me dispatch. Something I want to tell you. It's not going to be easy. It won't be easy on you either. Several years before you were born, I was put in charge of a research facility. We were working in cooperation with the NASA people on rocketry, space hardware, all handled very secretly, very carefully. But one day, there was an accident involving your mother. An accident? It was just before you were born. See, one day, we were scheduled to have an atomic test. Your mother told me that she thought she was going into labor. She wanted me to be with her. I said I couldn't. She later decided to drive to the test area so we could be together. There was an error in the device timing mechanism. It detonated before she could reach the observation bunker. You were born that afternoon. She died a month later. She told me she died of peritonitis. She did. But it was from exposure to radiation. You were in command? You didn't seal the area off? How the hell can you let that happen? Don't try to put any more guilt onto me than I already had. I loved that woman more than you will ever know. I didn't know she was there. And that's it? Your mother was a strong-willed woman with more charm than common sense. She managed to talk her way past the guard who should have stopped her at the gate. I think I'm beginning to understand something that's bothered me all these years. Every time you look at me, that image mirrors itself in your mind. Does it? I think it does. Any more questions, or can we get in the chapel? One more. I'd like to know why you told me this now after all these years. Because it's a possibility that your mother, having been exposed to so much radiation, made it possible for you to survive that lightning strike. What? Your mother's death may have saved your life. Dr. Miller. She's the lady I've been talking to. 
Dr. Miller is head of the Aeromedical Research Division here. That's a real mouthful. I know. Well, you're certainly more attractive than a lightning rod. Can uh, you make this work for me? I can pass electrical equipment like that security door out there without affecting it at all. It feels like the power within me is decreasing. Could that mean I'm returning to normal? I don't know. I'd have to do a series of tests on you before I could answer that. Jim? Pulse 102. Vascular subluxation. What's that mean? Ah, uh, it means you're uptight. <sighs> Someone that speaks my language. I'd like to start those tests right now, if it's okay. <laughs> Help me with it. Come on. I've been uh, put into a rather difficult uh, situation. Uh... Thank you. Thank you, Roger. You were saying? Well, what you did last night has put the general and the entire security force on guard. If you'd done your job, Holman, we wouldn't have had to contract people to try and break in. But you did, and now there's a the possibility of them being tracked down. And well, don't you concern yourself with that. We are ready to care of it, all right? Holman, let me remind you that people who work for us are very well compensated when they deliver. When they don't? Now, you've been paid extremely well. And I'd hate to think we're not getting a fair return on our money. Oh, now, look, I'll deliver. Uh, in, in fact, I, uh, I think something's about to break right now. See, the uh, general told me this morning that they're ready to test the uh, suspended animation life support system on a human being. Go on. And then his son turned up on the base. Well, don't you see that this device could be dangerous? I mean, what better way to show your faith in a project than to risk your own son? Isn't that a reach? No, it's not. You see, they flew directly to the Aeromedical Research Center to see one of the doctors there, uh, uh, Joanne Miller. Well, uh, if it's true, and they uh, do connect that device to his nervous system, then uh, you're going to have to take him off the base for tests, and that would be our opportunity to grab him. But if the device is implanted in his body, uh, how, how would you get it? We cut him open and take it. How's the system controlled? Well, I, I don't have all the details, but I know uh, it can be controlled by the subject, and when in space by NASA in Houston. Assuming that they do make Darrow's son the subject, how long would he be hospitalized? Ten days. Ten days, huh? Yes. Good. And after that, we'll give you five days to deliver him to us. Five days? But that's impossible. Is it, Holman? Let me tell you something. Our sponsor has money and power. The only thing he hasn't got is a guarantee of extended life. Now, he wants that very badly. He has given us a date on which to deliver. We decided to make you responsible for that deadline. And he does mean dead.
life, you know, you've been immune to minor electrical shocks, right? Mm -hmm. Well, we know that the radiation that your mother was exposed to, it also affected you. Huh? It altered your DNA structure, your whole molecular construction. You see, it made you able to withstand a heavy electrical charge. That's why you weren't killed when the lightning struck you. Yeah, but but let me finish. You see, when the lightning struck your body, your body was already in an altered state, right? It caused other changes. Now, you can store within you a huge electrical charge, but just for a limited period of time. Wait a minute, what do you mean a limited period of time? If the level of voltage in your body sinks too low, your bodily functions will fail, and if that level of voltage isn't replenished, you die. What the hell are you saying? But every day I've got to go out and get zapped by lightning again? Chris, listen to her. Look, I want you to think of yourself as a sort of high-powered car battery. Without the warranty. We have found a way, Chris, to retain the power. Come on. Let me show you. Does that hurt? It's tender. Well, it'll wear off very soon. See, this watch is your control mechanism. Now, it was designed for you by some of the best brains at NASA. Yes, it's uh, implanted into your wrist, connected to various organ and nerve centers. And it can't ever be removed? Not if you want to stay alive. Now, do you see this green line? It indicates the state of your charge. Presently, you're in the green. Meaning I'm okay? Exactly. And as you lose power now, this will change color. It goes from green to yellow, yellow to red. When this is all red, you must be recharged immediately. How do I do that? Special recharge unit. Uh, Jim, would you unscrew that light bulb for me, please? We'll have a special unit here, and I'm having one sent to your father's base. See these two buttons? The upper one is full power. Push it. Go on. How do you feel? I feel good. Very strong. Here. Also, while you're on full power, you'll have extra physical strength. We don't know how much. But you'll be able to create an electrical energy arc from your hand to any metal object, which is exactly what you'd be doing right now if this bed weren't insulated. You'll also be able to influence any electrical circuit that you need. Great. But, while you're on full power, you'll lose your energy even faster. And don't forget, your whole body is a conductor, so if any part of you touches water or metal, you'll lose the energy that's within you very fast. So you must use full power very sparingly. What if they switch to normal? That's already very dim. But even when I'm on normal, I'm still slowly losing my energy. My life, right? Beautiful. Just beautiful. So now I have to spend the rest of my life wondering where my nearest generator is. Chris, be grateful you have your life. There are other things besides life. One of them's called living. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. All this means is that you'll have to adhere to some form of regimentation. Look, rules and regimentation are your life, not mine. Look, what if I'm with somebody I really love, huh? What do I do? I get up and say, uh, excuse me, I have to go get my battery charged. Well, that was wonderful. Look, I want you to know that a lot of people spend a lot of time to give you life. Do you have anything else that you'd like to say? <sighs> I 
Is, uh, is this thing also tell time? Ah, uh, good night. Get some rest. General. Good night, Chris. The ID badge you put, sir. Thank you. Lieutenant General. Hi, Ed. Oh, Ed, I should have done this before. I, uh, I'd like you to meet my son, Chris. Chris, this is Captain Holman. How you do, Chris? Ed takes care of things around here for me. Is everything ready? Yes, sir. I have the room arranged for you, son. Now, here, let me take your bag, Chris. It's room uh, 34, straight down the hall. I'll go and make sure it's unlocked. Well, get a good night's sleep, and I'll speak to you in the morning. Please wear this at all times. Why do I suddenly start feeling like a prisoner? All civilians have to wear them. And please let Captain Holman or me know where you are at all times. It's for your own good, Chris. You know that. I'll see you later. Ready for the guided tour? Uh, thanks, but uh, I think I'd rather go to the fairground and check my aircraft. Well, I don't think the general would approve. He asked me to tell you where I'd be at all times. I'm telling you. for why we're not flying the air shows that we promised, and you want to welcome you back. Would you like me to ask you to dance, too? My dance card's all ready to... That's cute. But you can buy me a hot dog. All right, look, look, look. That, that girl you left here with was really something, but don't you think between you and me that you're pushing it with 10 days? The push stopped the first night when I met her father. Well, then tell me, where were you? If I told you, you wouldn't believe me. Come on, buy me a hot dog. Buy you a hot dog. Look, you know the old song, I'm broke, you're broke, we're all broke? Now, nah, hum me a few bars. That's the one we're singing now. You haven't flown for 10 days. Now, tell me where you were. Okay. I was struck by lightning and turned into a combination transmitting antenna and car battery. Sure you were. And I've been locked in a harem for 10 days. That's why I look so tired. Bill, you know, believe me, I was struck by lightning. Right. And you're not dead, because your old man's a lightning rod, huh? You don't know how close to the truth that is. He flew me to see some high-powered doctor who put me through a series of tests. Can you stop with the garbage? Why don't you try telling me the truth for once? I'll believe it. Come on. We'll call the doctor. Maybe she can convince you. She? Who? The doctor? Come on. Bill. 
Darrow is not at the airplane, but Holman is right. He's here someplace because I saw his car. We'll find him. Yeah, uh, thank you, Doctor. Good night. Then it is true. Yeah, all of it. Here. You mean to tell me that, that if, if this thing goes into red, then there's a chance that... Bill, I won't if I, uh... No, if I live by the rules. Periodically, I have to be uh, recharged, and uh, I have to wear this watch to uh, keep the energy under control. But what can I do? Same as always. Keep the formation tight when I need you. You got it. Hey, this is, uh, <laughs> this is getting uh, too heavy. Let's, let's go. Hey, Chris. Uh, don't you go and die on me, huh? What the heck am I gonna do with an airplane? <laughs> Come on. We're going home right now. Just one no, minute. I come on, darling. <laughs> come on, darling. No, mom? let me fix your shirt. Now, Mommy's waiting at home. She's got baked apples waiting for us. Mommy will be worried about us if we don't get home on time. Grandma! Grandma, the horse! The horse is running! Holman's right. Its animated system is uh, implanted in his body. And that's what made the sparks. Is that some kind of nuclear power system or what? I think so. If it stores the power, it releases the power. Hmm. <laughs> that's how it works. Oh, I tell you, could you ever wreck the slot machines in Vegas with that thing or what, huh? Hmm. Listen, I don't want to sound like an old man or anything, but shouldn't we be getting some rest or what? What's the weather report for tomorrow? I don't know. Listen to you. About ready to call it a night or no. what? Yeah. We want to talk to you. Might I suggest that your companion leave? Your father sent us. Oh, you're from the base? That's right. Base security. <laughs> he doesn't look like any MP I've ever seen. Just do as you're told. Do as you're told and nobody will get hurt. Wait just a minute. I'm not sure I like your attitude. Nobody's going anywhere until I see some sort of identity. Ow. Ow. No. no heroics, please, okay? You just spent ten days in the hospital. You just came with us quietly. Car's right over there.
Come in. Where's my son? Uh, sir? I said, where is my son? The gate guard says he drove off last night right after I left him in your care. Now, where is he? Well, he said he uh, wanted to go check his plane at the fairgrounds and that he'd be back. Why didn't you ask me first before you let him go off the base? I'm sorry, sir, but you never gave me any specific orders as to what security measures. Uh, all right, all right. I, I'm sorry, Ed. It's uh, not your fault. Would you like me to go with you, sir, to the fairgrounds? All right, you'll go alone. Oh, uh, by the way, Dr. Joanne Miller of NASA is due on the base this morning. Uh, have her met and make sure she is taken to building 3A. She has clearance. How will she be traveling, sir? She's taking a commercial flight. The information's on my desk. Yes, sir. This is Captain Holman. Get me an outside line, please. Our friend Holman is getting more reliable. There he is. Sorry to trouble you, but our car just quit on us. Are you out of gas? I don't think so. It just uh, cut out. Uh, I sure would appreciate some help. Mind if I take a look, ma'am? No, oh, go ahead. Thank you. Sure. <coughs> Dr. Miller? What are you doing? No questions, please. Just get inside our car. Look, let me at least look at it. Quick. We've only got an hour before he gets to the mill. Let's go. Pass me through to General Darrell. Emergency. So these two guys jump out of the shadows. They say, uh, hello, we're from base security. Would you come with us? Show you any ID of any kind? Any ID. This is the only ID they showed us. Why don't you call me immediately? Hey, look, General, I'm not programmed yet. There's nothing to do with being programmed. Listen, I'm a big boy. I can take care of my own problems. General Darrow. Yes, patch him through. What? Where did it happen? Damn. Is that all you heard? Uh, don't worry, don't worry. Uh, there's nothing more you could have done. Now get back to the base and alert security. Chris? Your stupid independence has put Joanne in great danger. What are you talking about? Two men. Probably the same two who jumped you last night. Just kidnapped her on the way to the base. Now, if I had known about last night, it might have given me time to anticipate something like this. Luckily, the driver overheard him mention something about a mill. What mill? I don't know. But he overheard them saying that it would take an hour to get there, which would uh, put us in this area. What kind of vehicle would it be? Red sedan. There are two mills in this area, one steel mill here, and another one there. It'll take about an hour to mount an air and ground search. Joe and I can get airborne right away. Easy on that wee stuff. Besides, we're low on fuel. At least we can start a search. We can keep in touch by radio. You're not going anywhere. Look at your charge indicator. Yeah, look at it. I've got to try, Dad. She saved my life. Don't worry. You get your people organized. We'll call you if it's possible. Take care. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Wait. I'm not flying. Phil, you gotta. I need you. I swore I'd never fly again. You know that. Listen, if anything happens to Dr. Miller, Chris could die. She's the only one that knows how to keep him alive. All right, all right, I'll go.
She's inside. Talk to her. Look, Dr. Miller. Who I'm, are you? I'm General Darrow's aide. What do they want? These men are desperate. They want the suspended animation life support system that you implanted into the general's son. Suspended life animation system? No, I didn't. I... No, please, doctor. The general showed it to me in his office. He, he told me that you... I don't know what you're talking about. Doctor, please listen to me. These men are lethal. There's nothing they wouldn't do to make you tell them what they want to know. And if you don't, they'll kill you. any trouble we've got the doctor she can help us remove the device from him Stevens you better go meet them Holman stand over there by the girl are you armed no I'm not look if Darrow sees me just I... shut up and do as you're told Keep a look at it. Hold it right there. Both of you move to the front of the car. Don't touch your wrist arrow. Come on. Come on, move it. Drop that pipe. I'm glad you could join us. You all right, Doc? What are you doing here? I'm afraid we pay him more than your father does. Darrell, there's no reason for anyone to get hurt. All we're interested in is the suspended animation system on your left wrist. Suspended animation system? That's what you think this device is? Chris! <laughs>
What do I, what do, I do? Get him out of the metal. He's losing energy. Uh, Don't be afraid to touch him. Get him out of there. Uh, 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 Switch it off to normal. I can't. It's broken. Get over here. Help me untie myself. No, there's no time for that. You're gonna have to fly him. I can't fly him. I can't fly him. What are you talking about? I can't understand. The last time I flew, I crashed. I killed my instructor. Not again. I'm not gonna risk his life. Well, his life? He doesn't have a life if you don't do something. Did you hear what I just said? Listen, did you hear what I said? The man is dead in 15 minutes if you don't help me get him on that plane into the base. Don't forget the recharge unit is located on the north side of the base, so land the plane as close as you can. Doc, if you know any prayers. reach the base in about eight to ten minutes. Can't we wait until you get here? No, I'm afraid not. It's going to take me too long. He could be dead by then. I'm going to have to tell you how to run the unit over the phone. All right, I'll call the police and have them pick up Holman and the others. Then I'll go over to the recharging unit. Call me in five minutes. Five minutes? Okay.
right, I've done that. Attention, attention. A light plane has landed on the highway by the north gate. You hear that, Joanne? They're here. Are we ready? Yes, just get him on that table as quickly as possible. Two knobs on the control desk under the dials. Two knobs on the control desk under the dials. Do you see them? Yes, I see them. He's got Tell him the needles must stay in the center section. They must not move into either the yellow or the red. He can control them with the knobs. What did she say? Are the needles anywhere near the red? They're moving toward it. Well, don't let them get there. You can control them with the two knobs. How long is this going to take? How long will it take? Until I get there. Call the gate to let me in. Until she gets here. How do I clear her at the gate? Use this phone. Call 914. In gate. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, here she comes now. Right. Make sure she gets in all right. Take it, General. If the needle stays in the green, he's holding the energy charge.
he's holding it. Bill! Don't go near him yet. He'll have to stay insulated till I can build him a new wash. How long will that take? Just a few hours. I didn't tell you back there. I owe you. Okay, Super Bulb. I think I'll collect at the air show at Hamilton. Remember that little redhead we were trying to hit on? You take a hike, huh? <laughs> okay. But, uh... What? Why is there always a but? Well, before we go, we have a problem. Whenever it's a girl, it's I. When it's a problem, it's we. My father thinks I might be useful in special assignments. What kind of special assignments? Government, law enforcement, anybody that needs us. Us? Yeah, us. You're kidding. No, neither was he. Well, what about our plane, our future? What Bill, it's a two-way street. Without their help, I don't have a future. I need special assignments. Can we run our own lives until they come up? Sure. Maybe weeks, months before they give us a call. Yeah? How about minutes? Boy, I hope this pays good. Hi, Dad. What took you so long? Not business. Joanne is leaving. She wanted to say goodbye. Hey, can't do that. Who's going to turn me on? No problem. The lab technician at the base checked out on the machine. Thanks for everything. I say, General, does this mean we can make that air show in Hamilton? I don't see why not. I just have one favor to ask of you, Chris. I know, I know. Keep in touch. Do it, okay? Okay. Goodbye. Take care. Bye, Dad. See if you can get that heat to Hamilton on time, huh? Yeah. Don't you get in a poker game and hock your watch before I get there. Bill, keep an eye on him for me, will you? You got it, Jen. 